It's good to see you today. Appreciate you tuning in. Hope you have, hope you're having a good day. Hope you had a good Lord's Day yesterday. It's Monday. Hope the day goes well, and I hope the week goes well for you. Today we're going to be thinking about Eli's wicked sons in 1 Samuel chapter 2. I thought we would get to Samuel today. Last week, on last Monday, we talked about Eli. And we're in 1 Samuel 1 and 2. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we talked about Hannah. Hannah being the mother of Samuel. Talked about the account as she was barren and as she prays to the Lord. And as Samuel is lent to the Lord as it is. Uh, Hannah, just a wonderful, wonderful character. Eli, not so much. Eli's wicked sons, even worse. So we're not quite ready to talk about Samuel yet. I wanted to talk about these these two fellows. Let's get over there and let's read about read a little bit about them. First Samuel chapter two. And let me back up, make sure I don't skip over something. Yeah, Eli's worthless sons. That kind of tells you how the Bible publishers feel about him, doesn't it? Verse 12, now the sons of Eli were corrupt. They did not know the Lord. Means they didn't have a relationship with the Lord. They weren't respecting the Lord. They just wanted to do what they wanted to do. Verse 13, and the priest's custom, not all customs are good, and the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered a sacrifice, the priest's servant would come with a three-pronged flesh hook in his hand while the meat was boiling. Then he would thrust it into the pan, or kettle, or cauldron, or pot, and the priest would take for himself all that the flesh hook brought up. So they did in Shiloh to all the Israelites who came there. Also, before they burned the fat, the priest's servant would come and say to the man who sacrificed, Give meat for roasting to the priest, for he will not take boiled meat from you, but raw. And if the man said to him, this, they really should burn the fat first. Then you may take as much as your heart desires. He would then answer him, No, but you must give it now, and if not, I will take it by force. Therefore the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for the men abhorred the offering of the Lord. Then we have a little bit about Samuel there, but Samuel, and this is in contrast with what was happening, you might think about Samuel being a young man, boy, even as a child here, what Samuel was exposed to should cause you to recognize, even as a boy, he was part of being faithful as being faithful regardless of what either other people are doing. Um, but it kind of makes you feel sorry for Samuel because of what he must have witnessed and what he knew was wrong. But he was he was just a boy. Verse 22, I think we actually read this verse last week. Now Eli was very old and heard everything his sons did to all Israel and how they lay with the women who assembled at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. The, the question is, why did those women assemble there? And what most folks say about it is that they were serving in the temple in some capacity. Um, for example, you have Anna in the New Testament talks about her being in the temple, and it looks like that there would be women who would assemble there and they would serve however they could, whatever whatever was needed to be done. Um, just they were trying to help out, serve as they could. So I want you to think about Eli's wicked sons, and let's think about. We'll begin with this: they were robbing God. One of the comments is made is concerning that business about the fat. The fat belongs to the Lord. And when that, that's what those individuals were saying in the account. When they were saying they really shouldn't be doing this, to back up a little bit, go back where we were, they really should burn the fat first. Then you may take as much as your heart desires. What these two individuals were doing was they were disrespecting God and they were robbing God of what was rightfully His. And that's what, that's what happens. That's what happens when we do not worship the Lord like we need to. We are robbing God. God is worthy of our worship. So when we don't give him what he is worthy of, it is robbing, it is robbing God. Passage talks about a den of thieves. That idea, it's robbing God. We could say more about that, but that's for another lesson. That's what these two sons of Eli were doing. Their relationship with God was not what it should have been. But also you have the worshipers. They were causing people, the passage says, for men, verse 17, for men abhorred the offering of the Lord. 
so to think about the worshipers. And actually what was happening, most people think that this was not a um, this was not a sin offering, this was not a burnt offering, that what this was, this this these would have been peace offerings. And with the peace offerings, you had a part of the offering that was for the priests. Okay? But then you have the fat, fat goes to the Lord, but then you have the rest of the offering would be the um the persons, whoever brought the offering, they would they would be able to eat the rest of the offering with their family and feast on that. So you have that, that picture of fellowship. So here these people are, and the priests got certain parts of the animal, the Lord got the fat, and the offerer got what was left. And these sons were sending servants saying, we're going to take whatever we want. They were robbing from the worshipers. This was meant so that the worshipers would be able to enjoy this and enjoy part of this peace offering and fellowship with God. They were robbing not just from God. They were robbing from their, from their brethren. We can do the same thing. We can do the same thing. If we're not treating our brethren right, we are not giving them what they need. And it's, in effect, robbing them. Think about the servants, and that's why I included the verse about the women at the temple. They were sleeping with the women who had come there to serve. What a, what a horrible picture. Here these women were just wanting to, wanting to serve the Lord. In all likelihood, I don't think the, this was like the, you know, in the pagan cultures, in the Gentile cultures, you had, you had the, the women who would prostitute themselves at the, at the pagan temples. I don't think that's what this is. These, these individuals were pushing themselves onto these women who had come there to serve, is what most people think. And, and just a horrible picture that, that how they were treating the Lord's servants, even here with these women. Just, just a horrible picture. They were causing people to absolutely hate, to abhor the offering of the Lord. Verse 17 again. And I think that's really what it boils down to. They were actually, and when Eli confronts them, sort of, like we spoke about last week, when Eli says, Oh, well, why do you do such things? Verse 23. Verse 24, really. No, my sons, for it is not a good report that I hear. You make the Lord's people transgress. And that's what they were doing. They were causing people to hate. They were causing people to hate worship. And they were causing people to sin and do things like that. And it's just a horrible picture. That's, that's who these guys were. They were wicked. Eli's wicked sons. They're going to end up paying the price. Both sons are going to die at the same time. As the Ark of the Covenant is going to be stolen away. We'll talk more about that probably in the upcoming weeks. Because that's what the Lord is going to tell Samuel is going to happen. When Eli hears the news... He's the one who falls off the back, right? He falls and breaks his neck because he was a, a large fella. So Eli and his sons are just about to go on to their reward. You might think about that idea. Eli's wicked sons. Horrible picture. Horrible. But that's where we are in Scripture. So I hope you have a good day today. It's been kind of a kind of a downer of a study to get us going today, but I hope you have a good day. Appreciate you tuning in for just this brief look into God's Word. Hope you tune in tomorrow. Um, tomorrow as we talk about a character from the New Testament. Appreciate you being with us today, and we'll see you, we'll see you tomorrow.